Welcome to our service this Sunday, the 26th of July. Wherever we are, we are all one in Christ. Our call to worship for today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. An opening prayer. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise. Inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue in our worship now with that old chorus, as we are gathered. I know we're not physically gathered, but wherever we are as the people of God, we are one with Jesus.
Later on in this service, Peter Miller will be coming to preach on Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And one of the things he'll be thinking about is the mind of Christ being in us. All too often, we tell God we will do better and be better. And then just go on living the same way we always have. Let us confess our sins, failures and faithlessness. But first, let's pause for a moment of silence to be mindful of those things. We pray together. God of glory, we want to be fountains of hope for others, but often but people often find only hardened hearts. Let's try that again so from the silence. Silence, yeah. silence. Let us pray together. God of glory, we want to be fountains of hope for others. But people often find only hardened hearts. We would like to be... be t- we can probably go from hearts. <laughs> Let's go from the beginning, from the silence. silence. We pray together. God of glory, we want to be fountains of hope for others. But people often find only hardened hearts. We would like to be transformed people... But our stubborn pride prevents us from bending a knee to you. We long to stand with those who are in need, but our selfishness keeps us rigid in judgment. Forgive us, God, who came down to us. Humble us that we might be true servants to the broken and the lost. Split open our frozen hearts that compassion might flow freely to those who are hurting. Fill our minds with the presence of your Spirit, that we might learn how to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, into the kingdom of grace and hope. Amen. Hear the good news. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Through his obedience, we are therefore freed from whatever sin enslaves us. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now the collect for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now continue in sung worship.
Today's reading is from Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Today we are continuing our Bible study series on Philippians entitled Joy in Lockdown. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. In this letter Paul writes to encourage individual Christians to come together to be all one in Christ Jesus. But before we start I'd just like to point out that whenever we read a therefore in the Bible we should look back to see what it's there for. A therefore is like a new course of bricks each course being built on the one before. Chapter 2 starts with if then, which is a therefore, so we should look back to chapter 1 to see what this passage is built on. There are other therefores to come, so as we study this letter it might be useful for us to read and reread what Paul has to say. Paul begins this chapter by using the formula of what we call the grace in order to highlight the three persons of the Trinity being united as one God. And he reminds us of the things that all Christians receive in their newfound relationship with God. We receive encouragement in Christ. We, we receive the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who brings compassion and sympathy as we share in his work. In verses 3 and 4 of chapter 1, Paul tells us that he prays for the Philippians and he knows them well enough to pray for them all individually and with joy. And in verse 2 of chapter 2, he asks them to make his joy complete. In other words, Paul is asking that they become the answer to his prayers. And as we read on, Paul's prayer for them is revealed. Paul says, Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Paul prays that they will be of the same mind. We can be of the same mind on many Christian issues. We agree that Jesus is central to our lives. We agree a general direction for our church to take. We can agree that we want to receive and share the good news of Jesus. But we all have our own ideas of how we should do things. And it is often difficult for us to be in full accord and of one mind. In a recent interview in regard to the death of Jack Charlton, Mick McCarthy was asked what it was that Jack Char Charlton did when he became the manager of the Ireland football team a team that he led to the World Cup for the very first time in their history. Mick McCarthy said that Jack Charlton had taken a group of good individual footballers and then moulded them into a great team. This is what Paul is asking the individuals of Philippi to become, a great team doing nothing out of selfish ambition, but regarding others as better than themselves. Keeping with the football theme, everyone who knows anything about football agrees that Ronaldo is a great footballer. But who is the best between Ronaldo and David De Gea? Ronaldo is a better striker, but De Gea is a better goalkeeper. They would never try to swap positions because they each regard the other as being better than themselves in the positions that they play. 
This is at the heart of how a good team works, and it is, as, it is the same among Christians. In humility, we can regard others as better than ourselves, because we all have a part to play, and we will no longer keep looking to our, our own interests, but to, to the interests of our teammates and our team. Many years ago, I helped to run the youth group at St Margaret's, and we became involved in a, an inter-church competition with five or six other churches. There were sports competitions and cooking competitions and art and all sorts of things. And we would meet up to compete with the other church groups. And often we would win, especially the football. But there was one competition called choral speaking. And none of us was very sure what choral speaking was. To say that our teenagers were not enthusiastic would be a total understatement. At first, nobody wanted to do it. But eventually, they decided it was all or nothing. So, in the end, everybody got involved. We chose a passage of scripture and split the passage up like an orchestra, blending different voices, sometimes softer, sometimes louder, sometimes a single voice, sometimes everybody at once. They practiced hard, and over the course of several weeks, they became cautiously confident that they could do it. On the day of the competition, it was apparent that none of the other churches knew what choral speaking was either. <laughs> As each church took their turn, they stood up in twos or threes and mumbled into their written scripts. I remember that some of our kids were cross with me because I told them that reading was not allowed. Our turn came, and our whole group stood to take their places. They stood upright, they were clear and powerful, they were word perfect, and together they completely stole the show. The passage we chose was Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11, which begins, Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. It is a poem or a song which describes the process of Christ's obedience to God. Jesus, a member of the Trinity of God, did not consider his equality as something to be exploited or grasped. He let go of his godliness. He emptied himself in order to become the saviour of the world, to become the bridge that allows us to be reunited with God and to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Jesus came down from heaven to earth. He did not arrive as a superhero. He did not arrive as a king. He came as a baby, weak and helpless. His parents could have been rich and powerful, but the parents God chose were poor and lowly. And when Jesus was born, his birthplace was a stable. All this Jesus did in obedience to God, and as Jesus grew he humbled himself in order to serve others better, to teach people about the kingdom of God and to bring healing and forgiveness. His greatest act of obedience and humility was to die an unjust and painful death a cursed death on the cross to bring salvation, to take our place, to take our sins upon him. Therefore, because of all that Jesus did in obedience to God, God raised him and gave him the name that is above every other name. I'd like us just to pause and think about that. The name of God is too sacred to be uttered, but we have descriptions of God which help us to understand him better. 
he is called Elohim, which means creator, Adonai, Lord or Master, El Shaddai, God Almighty, Jehovah Mekadesh, the God who sanctifies, Yahweh Roy, the Lord is my shepherd, Yahweh Tsuri, the Lord my rock, Yahweh Rophe, the God who heals, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, and a word that Jesus often used, Abba, which means father or daddy. But above all these names stands the name of Jesus. His name is above every other name because it is only through the name of Jesus that salvation can be secured. No other name of God brings about salvation, only the name of Jesus. Whatever you would name as the most important thing in your life, the name of Jesus is more important. He is more important than your family, your children, your wealth, your health. He is more important than everything. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. We seem to have lost the act of kneeling in church. It used to be the position for prayer. Recently, we have seen people taking the knee at the start of football matches in support of Black Lives Matter. I understand and applaud this stance, but when we kneel to Jesus, we are not kneeling in protest or in support of a cause. We kneel in obeisance and in humility. We kneel for all that Jesus has done for us. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord whether you believe it now or not. And one day, even the satanic forces under the earth will one day come to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But our, for our salvation, we must own this undeniable truth for ourselves so that we bow our knees to Jesus and with our own lips we confess that he is our Lord and Saviour. It is from this position on our knees before Jesus that we can become the answer to Paul's prayer to complete his joy by being of one mind and to be of the same mind, the mind of Christ, the mind of obedience and service, working together as part of his team, members of the same body of Christ. And finally, I'd just like to glance back at chapter 1, verse 27, where it says, Let your lives, live your lives in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. Let's be part of this team. Amen.
Let us take from our scripture passage for today this affirmation of faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. We say together, Though he was divine, Jesus did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. St. Francis of Assisi is a saint beloved by both Catholics and Protestants. He lived a life of poverty, love, compassion, humility and service, very much as St. Paul outlined in his letter to the Ephesians, which is our reading today. Matt suggested that I could use this prayer of St. Francis as a framework for my intercessions this morning words which echo those of St Paul's letter. The Prayer of St Francis Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Lord, we live in a fractured and divided world. We think of those who live with war, famine, corruption, injustice, oppression as a daily occurrence. So many people in so many countries. Lord, help us to embrace all people in our hearts and minds with the love of Christ and root out any discrimination in our own thinking. Give us the courage to confront racist attitudes wherever or whenever we meet them at work, in our own homes, in our community or families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our time of confession, we acknowledge that we all fall short of the standards set by Christ and the way he would have us live with other people in love and compassion, at all times seeking unity one with another. Help us to be aware of the thoughts and feelings of others and to be sensitive to their needs. Where we have been inconsiderate or tactless, help us to amend our ways and shine the light of Christ into their lives and welcome him into our own lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the 14 new IEM mission partners preparing to go to their mission statements. May the love and joy of the Lord Jesus Christ be with them in their work and witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for the work and witness of those who bring help and hope to the homeless in our own city, especially the work of Barnabas and their new Beacon Support Centre to be opened soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community in Burnage, we pray for the streets of our parish week by week, and this week we pray for those people living in Irwood Road and especially the homes between Shawbrook Road and Crossley Road. 
for our church and my family here at St Margaret's. We pray for Matt, Peter and all their helpers as the church opens safely for worship at this troubling time. We pray for Duke as he prepares the All Age Celebration Sermon. And we pray for all who are living alone and those who find shielding and lockdown very lonely, stressful, depressing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our friend, hear our prayer. For all those missing hugging and holding hands with loved ones and meeting with friends. These people and those who are personally known to us who have had difficulty adjusting to lockdown. We pray that the spirit of the living God would enter their lives and give the peace of God which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together into our special prayer, the prayer of the family of God, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. come to our final prayer of blessing. May we bow at the name of Jesus and ask that the same love, compassion and humility in him would be found in us. 
May we promote the interests of others and grow in unity of purpose and service in the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us live our lives in a way that proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.